going to go over the EcoFlow River 2. I'm not going to go over too much of the redesign. There's clearly a little bit of the redesign here where the handle is now on this side. All the charge ports are on the back and all the uh, discharge ports, I guess, are in the front. But I mean, sure, you've seen enough of the uh, designs and other videos to see how it is like. The display is now actually only one color now. It's monochrome. It's no longer multicolor. But I guess, in a way, it does save on power. This is advertised as 256 watt hour battery. Uh, you're going to see in my test that's not exactly accurate based on if you're using the AC inverter or any of the DC inverters, but we'll go over it in a quick pros and cons. So let's just do this quickly and uh, see if this uh, device is actually good for you or not. So let's start with the pros. It does have pass-through charging, uh, so you're able to basically charge it from either the USB-C in the front or on the back the uh, solar charger uh, all, or the, I guess, cigarette charger as well as the AC and still be able to uh, run your devices at the same time. So that's a good point right here. Next one is this advertised to have a 300 watt inverter. That's not entirely accurate. I'm going to explain that to you later. And it's nothing to do with the X-Boost, but we'll see. Uh, next point to point out that this is a new uh, chemistry design. It is using the LifePo4. Uh, chemistry so you can get up to 3,000 cycles before you lose only the top 20% of the battery capacity and we'll see what the battery capacity is. Now that's good because actually there are some strategies to actually extend it further than 3,000 cycles. So uh, if you do this right this would last you a very 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 long time. I'm talking about maybe 20 years if you do this correctly. Uh, next thing to point out here is the 12.5 uh, volt Cigarette, uh, I guess, cigarette port, if that's what we call it these days. Uh, it does give you a maximum of 100 watts, which is not bad. I think it's more than enough to most of these uh, uh, portable fridges. So that's also a good point here. Uh, the weight of this is about 7.7 .7 pounds, which is reasonably uh, portable in a, in a way. Uh, this is also, even though it doesn't say it here, it is a bi-directional USB-C um, in and out so you can actually charge this from the USB-C it's only 60 watt I would have liked to have seen it 100 watts but that's what they gave us at least for the lower model uh, next thing I want to talk about is this is actually uh, not advertised necessarily as an uninterruptible power supply a UPS but actually was 30 millisecond switchover I tested it with my internet modem it does not uh, turn off I tried it with laptops it doesn't turn off so to the most part unless you have some really sensitive electronics, this actually would work quite well as a UPS. But don't quote me on it because I don't want you to connect servers on it, but to the most part, to the most sensitive uh, or not so sensitive electronics, it actually works quite well. The AC charging uh, of this is variable based on the app. You can charge it between 50 watts to 360 watt, which is great, by the way, and I'll discuss some uh, reasoning why you want to charge it at the slower rate because actually that will increase your battery uh, lifespan. So it will get, get you a lot more than th uh, 3,000 cycles if you actually charge it at a lower rate because actually it damages the chemistry. Which What, what really damages chemistry is heat. That's why you're trying to uh, limit the heat as much as possible. The other thing I want to point out is the app. The app, in this case, um, they gave you the limit to actually let this have a, a lower rate. So I can, I can say turn off at 20%. So it doesn't discharge lower than 20%. I can say don't charge it over 80%. Why I'm picking those numbers actually, and I can show you a chart if you're interested, but if you keep the battery in that sweet spot spot between 20 to 80, 20 to 80%, you actually extend the life expectancy of this battery significantly longer. So you can get maybe even five or 6,000 cycles on this. So this could last you well over 20 years if you do this right. Uh, the other thing to point out is they actually give you a leading five-year warranty on this power supply, which I think is unbeatable compared to everything else. It's not all perfect, though. There are some shortcomings, and I want to talk about them right now. So the first thing I want to talk about is there's no shape or form multiple charging sources, which means I can't charge it on USB-C and uh, um, the solar uh, charger in the back. I cannot charge it on AC and DC at the same time. Any combination you can think of will not work, which means you can only charge it with one source. And it will basically default to the AC charger, and then it will pick later on if you're going to go USB-C or you have solar for 120 watts. Oh yeah, that's another con. 
the maximum you're able to charge this on the solar charger is 110 watts. That is it. So it would take you about three hours to fully charge. While you can charge it on AC within one hour if you go full power for blast. So that's what it is. So the other thing I want to talk about is the actual capacity. So I'm going to show you quick videos there uh, to show you what the actual capacity is if you're using the AC inverter or the DC inverter. The other thing is, uh, is how well this thing keeps its charge if you leave it on. If you leave the AC inverter here, it will drain about 4% per hour, which is very high. The average is usually 1% to 2%. So never leave this off. Go to the app, make sure, like not leave this on. Go to the app, make sure that you have a good timeout on this. The DC inverter though, however, it's actually quite well. It drains about 0.4% per hour, which is very decent. Another con here is the USB-A. Those are not quick charger, which means you are limited to about 12 watts. Uh, so I don't know why they did that. I think it's um, a misstep on their part, but that's what you get. So we're going to move now to the capacity test just to see how well um, this actually has in it. And I'll show you the problem with the AC inverter. One thing I want to mention about the capacity is there's going to be a lot of videos you're going to see which have significantly different uh, capacity percentage that they got. Um, I have it with the latest firmware. I'm going to put the latest firmware uh, information on this video. which should appear somewhere up there. Uh, that's what it, this is running. So it actually got significantly better. Okay, let's move to the uh, test. Okay, in this test, I wanted to test the AC inverter to see what I can run in it. And uh, what I found very interesting here is actually uh, this device here that I'm connected to is a small portable heater that's designed to give no more than 189 watts. However, when I do several tests on other inverters, you're going to see that actually it does spike uh, up to 300, 350, then drops down to uh, the 200, then settles down under 200. What you see here, interestingly, is actually it does turn on, but it actually gives no power. As you can see, even in the inverter, is not actually doing anything. It is lighting up the device, but it refuses to turn on. So I go to the app, and I turn on the X-Boost, and still it doesn't turn on. Even though this device, technically, should more than well work if you look at the specs of it it's a less than 200 watt heater it's actually designed for small uh, power consumption and it's supposed to turn on even with xbox it doesn't turn on so that's a, a either a bug that can be fixed in the firmware or there's a problem with this uh, inverter all the tests that i've done with this ac inverter it seems to be happy around 285 watts continuous but if it does spike, it just would not turn on. Now I'm going to do another test later on just to show you how other uh, power stations of relatively the same price range actually behave with the same exact heater. See, this is the Jackery 300. This is quite an old model. Uh, it actually even uses the old chemistry. As you can see here, this is drawing in the 200 range and it actually is working quite well without any issues. In fact, I can connect other stuff to the AC inverter and try to drain more out of it and still works perfectly fine, doesn't stop, doesn't short and it easily runs uh, 300 watts, definitely runs this heater. So I don't know why that happens, I don't know if it's a bug or not, I can show you here again. AC inverter, turn this thing on, it does connect, it's not a, a failed port but it just won't work. Nothing you do will make it work. The AC inverter will just not turn on. I've tried to reach the echo flow just to see get a comment from them, but as you can see, no, no heater coming out of this one. And it doesn't matter which port you connect it to. I was wondering if it needs the ground or not, but no, it is responding. The heater does uh, light up as you can see, but no heat comes up. So keep that in mind. Here, this is again the Jacker 300 again, an older model. And I can overload this. I can put, use the AC, DC board and so on. I can draw the maximum 300 watts with all these devices connected. No problem, it keeps on chewing. In fact, I think I can even go higher than 300 watts for uh, quite some time before it actually times out. So it's clearly something that the Igflow can do. Uh, I just hope that some, that's something that they can fix in their uh, firmware because that seems to be uh, an issue. 
here again see I've got it even higher than the uh, 300 watts limit and I'm using all the ports still no problem while on the other one if I just connect the heater alone on one of the AC ports nothing it wouldn't even turn on even with the X boost so here again I want to show you the uh, I know it's a little bit uh, maybe I can't focus the camera very well but if you can see correctly it says here that this is running about 189 watts all right now let's do a capacity test of the uh, power station here I'm running just DC as you can see and we're obviously running this quite fast I know you're not gonna waste hours of your time uh, and I'm drawing a reasonable 60 watt out of the well which is the maximum out of the USB-C so that's relatively the most efficient way hopefully to uh, pull the uh, all the power capacity out and you're gonna see what the actual capacity is And there you have it on DC 228.79 watts which is a whopping 89% efficiency which is quite amazing now here at the AC inverter and I didn't really have something besides that heater that doesn't work to pull uh, uh, the maximum I can from this scenario watts. what I did is I connected this 200 watt uh, AC inverter to the uh, DC and converted them and then basically powering up charging other power banks and as you can see here, I'm drawing about 172 watts uh, on the AC inverter. And let's see actually what the capacity of it is using the relatively not so efficient AC inverter. And there you have it, 214 watt hours out of 256, which is about 83.6% efficient. So keep that in mind when you're using the AC inverter. Anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know in the description below. And I'm more than happy to test other tests if you have. And um, that's my take on it. Overall, it's relatively good. It does have its shortcoming compared to the competition but it is relatively uh, inexpensive com considering what you are getting and the chemistry they're getting and the five-year warranty and so on. All right, see you in the next video.